Kratos' lasting impression that we all have within us the capacity for change. impetus behind God of War was we wanted to do an action-adventure game that felt like a cross between Raiders of the Lost Ark and Clash of the Titans. We really wanted to try to make a video game that delivered on the promise that you had seen on so many backs of boxes. I would describe God of War as basically it's every Greek myth you loved as a kid in video game form with the brutality ratcheted up to 10. <laughs> What I love about the series is it blends everything I love. I love action, exploration, puzzles, and story. They bring you like a full meal, basically. In the very first game, you're introduced to Kratos, who is known as the Ghost of Sparta. He's a former Spartan warrior. You're actually introduced to him as he's on the edge of a cliff about to commit suicide. That's the first time I ever saw that in a game. I'm like, wait, he's gonna kill himself? Kratos, when you first meet him, is in a great deal of torment because he is racked with guilt and has these recurring nightmares uh, of murdering his wife and kid. And he has sort of been traveling around the world, the ancient world, sort of at the request of a, a handful of the ancient gods doing these heroic tasks for them. The plan was that he would do enough of these tasks and they would take away these nightmares from him and that was sort of the deal. Turns out they really never promised to take away his nightmares. He was really a, a warrior who made a bad deal with Ares and just wanted revenge for what he saw as a slight. I will have my revenge! His determination, no matter what happens to him, he will always get back up. He is so focused and driven. And I think that's also another thing that people, you know, you know, admire about him. You know, sometimes we want to give up in life or whatever, but he constantly keeps going no matter what's presented in front of him. Whether it could be like a Cyclops or a Medusa or whatever, he doesn't care. He has a goal in mind and he's going to do it. Kratos looks very much uh, like a person who is very violent. Uh, his weapons are these chains that are seemingly permanently wrapped around his wrists and end in these knives. I mean, rage is sort of the, the, the word that we've associated with it. He, he represented, I think, that ability to take all of your inhibitions and all that, that, that sort of the good side away and really just that, that sort of focused, unbridled rage. There's so many aspects of life that you feel powerless in, and being able to have an outlet where you can pick up a video game and feel powerful and get some of that internal rage expelled onto the character that you're involved in and that you're playing, um, that's God of War. For me, the first series of games, the Greek era of God of War, is Kratos kind of working towards hitting rock bottom. I consider the end of three the beginning of his bottoming out. That, that period of time where the reality of his cursed existence starts to come into focus. And he's got to live with all these things. The one thing he wanted all the time, get rid of the visions, take all these horrible things away that I did, which you can't do. You can't erase what you've done in the past. You have to figure out how to live with it. You have to figure out how to make better decisions tomorrow. I think it took him a long time to realize that. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a tragic figure, but at the same time, he brought all that on himself. It was because of his hubris that he called upon Ares to help him destroy the barbarian armies. None of that would have befallen his family. His family would still be alive. He goes on a heroic journey, but he's not a hero. I don't think so. I think part of being a hero is being selfless to some extent, and I think he's very selfish. I do think that an anti-hero can be a hero. Just because you don't like the person doing the things that they're doing doesn't make their actions any less heroic. But the fact is, he's punishing all these gods for all of their transgressions against humanity and against mortals. But what we always seem to bake into each one of the stories was this idea that inadvertently he helped mankind, right? He eliminated sort of a very, I think, tyrannical political system of the gods. Since he's apparently killed all of Greek mythology, he's now moved on to a different mythology, probably to slaughter. Norse mythology, which is very interesting and completely unexpected. As much as I love the old God of War games, I think they ran their course as far as Kratos' story. He needed to go somewhere else, both, you know, literally and figuratively. What are we hunting? You are hunting deer. Which way? Your hunt, you tell me. 
He now has a son and is now trying to become human. You know, he's a demigod, but he wants to reconnect with his human self. So he's teaching his son how to be a god or a demigod. And in the meantime, his son, in being there, in the fact that he's frail and, and needs to be protected because he's not an adult, is in some way, I would assume, teaching Kratos how to be human again. I think there's definitely more of a mature Kratos coming from uh, Greek into Norse. So I think that we're sort of setting up for what could be a very interesting game that's going to combine all of the amazing gameplay of the previous God of Wars, but a much more nuanced and complex story. I think all things sort of have to evolve. And this new game, to me, is kind of the, the jump start, the kick in the butt. Doesn't matter the distance we've traveled down the dark road. If we can find within us the will to take a step towards another way, a lighter path, then I think through a lot of work, it's possible.